nigga, yeah. Still in the club with the young nigga, yeah. Young gold nigga, young gold nigga, yeah. Still f***ing all the young gold niggas. Tune in every Monday, 6 p.m. Tuesday, 6 p.m. Wednesday, 6 p.m. And Thursday, 6 p.m. It's like a whole series. Tune in. Yeah, check us out. All right. Young gold nigga, Yo, it's your boy King Kelso. It's your boy Bone. And it's the fifth one. Circle of Life yeah. podcast, huh. man. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're back another episode of some of this real conversation. Yes, sir. With real people. Yeah. You know, we kind of connected from, uh, you know, just kind of the grind that we were on from the streets and all that, yeah. making shit happen when nothing is really happening. And um, we bring a different twist to it. Yeah. Today, um, we got a guest uh, that goes by Alex Airbrush Luna. Airbrush Luna, man. Hey, hey man, he made me a believer. He made me a believer. I said, man, you got to come and do an interview oh, with man. me, man. Appreciate uh, it very much. Yeah. yeah, me seeing that come from nothing, from a sketch to you know bring that shit to life, put the colors and all that. Just, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I guess we just all kind of manifested it, right? Uh, It's just, I got a phone call from my friend Kodak, and he was just like, hey, these are some ideas that I got for you. Can you just put something together? And I was like, yeah, yeah, let let me do something. So I I, I found some scraps at the house or some material, and I started putting something together by the time that he came to talk about what we were going to do. I was already doing something, right? Yeah. We didn't even know what we were really getting into. We was just kind of like, I did just the outline of it. And then uh, he just told me, hey, there's more space at at, uh, at the place, at the mansion. So mm-hmm. I told him, okay, well, yeah, let's go work over there. Monarch you know? Mansion. So yeah. That's a good plug. Appreciate yeah, yeah, that. for sure, for sure. You know, Monarch Mansion. Uh, so yeah, I went over there. You know, uh, definitely felt a good, good uh, vibe there. So, man, just kind of like chiefing the whole time and just got to work, man. I just got to work, and, right. and I think you got there right when, right, right when I was getting started. Right there, right, right, you know, because right, right. I had already done the, the little black outline, right, you know, right. of like where strategically things were gonna go. But that was it. So tell me about the process of having the. Uh, the f- um, I think it's a what is it called? It's a camera or something that you use, projector. The projector. Uh-huh. So the projector puts the image. Up. Well, you could get um, you know, with the projector, you can like use uh, a tablet, you can use your phone, you can use any device and just project the image. You know, a lot of people use the projectors to like watch a movie, right? But if you actually push pause. Then that image is it becomes an image, right? Right. At in in that still moment, and then so what I started doing is instead of trying to go through the whole process of guessing where everything is gonna go, just use that projector, project that image, get the kind of the outlay of right. of that one image, and then move on to another image and put a few pieces together that are a little more accurate than me trying to like. Um, do it by by you know just yeah. guessing right. or measuring right because if you're measuring it takes you got to go from inches to feet or right. whatever else right. you got to do right? right and so each object would just become very lengthy in time right complicated so, yeah i just had to find a way to like kind of that's my first time seeing a uh, artist have a projector projecting the image that they're doing that's that's very very thoughtful you know yeah that for real i i didn't know what you had it there for but that that is that's yeah really, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's 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 some of that good weed and you just <laughs> figured that shit out um yeah 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 sort of but i would i would credit you know uh all the artists that i've run into in my life they have taught me something right right about the art and there was one teacher his name was charlie brown and he said man alex he said you you are an artist already you already shown that you can draw so why are you gonna waste your time you know in that part of it when you can do when you know you can take your artwork to another level and do more stuff by you know just kind of uh using tools to improve 
and technology don't don't shy away from technology right right you know because the you know the older generation is always like no well, yeah you know it's better back in the days and all this and this and that uh i feel like it's good to be involved in both what the old school habits were right and what the new generation got to teach us right yeah. and i always feel like i'm learning from from everybody yeah and use the techniques from the old and use some of the new techniques and create the masterpieces, man. Definitely, already. Yeah, man. I, I salute you, that You blew my mind with that shit. <laughs> I, I've seen the airbrush thing go, you know, like at the, I think you said you was at Sharpstown Mall or something, right? I was, yeah, 2000, around 2000, 2001. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. What, you was, you was printing on shirts or something? Uh, yeah, back then I was uh, doing t-shirts. Uh, I started back in 99. But in 2000, I started doing it as my as my own company, you know, uh, Airbrush Techniques, which got shortened down to AirTech, which now I run as AirTech Entertainment because I don't just do the airbrush. I do the whole experience, the entertainment of the airbrush, right? As, cause some some uh, artists don't want to be seen by by others, you know, like how you were there. And we were just playing music, and I was just doing the artwork, right? right while you was right. there, some artists don't they yeah, they, they ain't comfortable shit. like yeah. with with that, right? But I give you the whole air tech, which is airbrush techniques and the entertainment part, which is what my company uh, that's uh, with with the DBA and with the uh, with the sales tax and all that is is uh, air tech entertainment. Yeah. It's been around since uh, two thousand and. 10 i believe how can they get in contact with you to get your work i think the best way would either probably look up uh alex airbrush luna on facebook or on um instagram, instagram. and i try to use uh the post with uh, the hashtag alex airbrush luna so you can find it on either or right right because i think when i first started the name i put a dash on it right uh it was alex dash airbrush luna uh, then uh, I had another account that was just my personal account, and uh, all of a sudden I started getting all these uh, followers and fans and well f- friends. They were actually my friends. And then Facebook said, "Well, you know what? We're just gonna turn you into a public figure, and those friends of yours are gonna become your followers." So I was like, "Okay, well." So that's how I started be- with uh, me becoming a public figure, Alex Airbrush Luna. Alex. Airbrush Luna, y'all check him out. If you need some uh, airbrush uh, work, uh, you know, just get in contact with him. He can tell you every, everything that he can uh, accompany you, accompany you with. Alex Airbrush Luna. Yeah. Um, so, what, what, where are you from exactly? Spring Branch. Uh, Spring well, where am I from? So, I was born in El Salvador. Uh, this is a small country in uh, Central America, mm-hmm. and me and my mom came to the United States uh, when I was one, well, between one and one and a half years old. And I say that because she had to like cross about four, between four to six times before she actually just made it to here to be able to stay. Uh, and then every time she got like sent back to like Mexico, she'd take me back, right? So it, I've been here in Houston at age one and a half for gotcha. sure. So from gotcha. that point on, it's uh, Houston's all I know. Gotcha. Houston's gotcha. my love, man. <laughs> you know, my hometown for sure. Everybody's like, well, you know, I don't, uh, I want to move here. I want to move. I'm like, man, I want to travel the world. As an artist, I want to travel the world. I want to go everywhere that I can in, in this planet. And she, even outside this planet, but <laughs> home for me is always going to be Houston, Texas. H town. How much H-town. traveling have you done so far? So far, I've been through maybe I'd say uh, twenty states. I've been to uh, El Salvador, been to Mexico, and I've been to Ireland, which is my first trip to Europe. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, how did uh, you get to Ireland? Irish girlfriend. <laughs> I had an Irish girl. Irish girlfriend. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Then me and her went there together. And then she ended up not being able to come back, and so I came back alone. Right? Oh wow! Yeah, that was about five years ago now. So, yeah, yeah. 
it's kind of how that ended. But yeah, that was my first trip to Europe, and yeah, that was a fucked up story. <laughs> it was it was it? No, I don't. I mean, that you part glad, probably you so back? right. Oh. You know? Yeah, I mean, you she know. good where she at? At the moment, I think so. I okay. think you know we all follow follow our path, and you know if if, if if it's meant for us to be together, like you know when I'm sixty and you know whatever, you God know, damn. shit. 60? Uh, you know, shit, 60, 80, whatever, you know. Yeah, whenever it hits you. <laughs> yeah. I like this. Yeah, after traveling the yes, world sir. and having fun, you know. Now, I got a question. How many times out of space? <laughs> Have I been? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can't I'm, even count them no more. I'm about to say, I go to the moon on a regular basis. You go basis. to the moon on a regular <laughs> basis. I try to stay there. Yeah, yeah. I'm usually there, too. Yeah, I'm usually yeah. there, too. My last name is Luna, you know. Luna yeah. means moon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I made a path. 20, 23. The only place I will not go to the moon uh -huh. is right here. <laughs> and I leave this motherfucker. I'm straight to the moon. Yeah, guys. all yeah, right. You, you right. kind of taking yeah. it light tonight, yeah. man. Yeah. Because uh, I told you, bro. One through Episode one through two. We banging. I know it, man. I'll be looking at my and eyes and shit. I'll oh, be like, man, we doing way too damn. much. <laughs> but we on track, man. But, but I was looking at your social media. Yeah. And all I can see is you hitting a square like this. Like this motherfucker, this motherfucking big. Yeah. I know. What the fuck is you doing? I know. Man? That's what I'm saying, man. I switched yeah, it up. You're flying, right? Yeah. Flying you like a motherfucker. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. I feel you. Got a squad away, baby. Because <laughs> we own the something. It's medicine. Yeah. It's it's medicine. Me it definitely is medicine. It, that should be putting me to sleep every yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's been, uh, it was good to meet you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, Hold on. Let's talk about this. Forgot all about this. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Okay. When I look at pictures like those from Miss MJ, uh -huh. I always look at the eyes. Okay. To me, when I look at all this work, if you can't do this well, I don't want to see nothing else. <laughs> you know I understand. I understand what you mean. Yeah, the eyes right. is, is a very important. It's like a photo, right? First thing you don't look at is that person's eyes. Yeah, yeah. So is it, 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 what this is the window to the soul, soul, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you can't make me feel it through a painting, man, I don't think you're worth it. <laughs> yeah, I understand what and you mean. And that was the first thing I saw. Like, oh, you know, oh, I was yeah, kidding. Yeah. I was like, why is this yeah. motherfucker looking he, at me? He trying to make sure we try. We tell him the truth here, yeah. right? Yeah, he trying. Oh. He, he made sure we tell him the truth, I, I, <laughs> keeping I, I, it real. I love it. <laughs> and how long did this piece take? For you? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, um, between here and the clouds that I've been in, you know, <laughs> it was done in a day. How many hours it took, I can't really tell I you. Feel, yeah. I feel. I feel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it was uh, it, it was on the third day of, of working uh, uh, steady. So, yeah, but you said you still had something else to do. I what definitely do, man. You know, uh, like his chain was a, was a gold chain uh, okay. to start off with. Uh, you know, this uh, this is a bun second year at the rodeo, right? right. So his is they're not letting him do the Houston takeover this year. So he's gonna do the Southern takeover. Right. Uh, I'm gonna emphasize the word Southern takeover, and okay. uh, yeah. Um, that I was actually thinking of doing. You were showing me the glow in the dark painting earlier, which is tripping me out because I, I was uh, thinking of doing a white outline, but then putting the, like a glow in the dark on there to where you would see it on the know. chain. No, the word Southern Takeover. Oh. Right, it would it would just glow in the dark. Right. Fuck but, yeah. But you know, I, could probably, I I might end up doing something on the chain too. Right. I was I was thinking of doing some little little. Uh, you know, decoded mess things, cool stuff on there, like UGK for life or something on there, you know, something cool, okay. right? You know, but okay. there's, there's something that you'll only see at certain times or certain angles or during certain lighting, right? Man, <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's what you're going to do. Uh huh. You when you do that, you let us know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Before you let everybody else know. Right, right. Yeah. yeah I mean, the other piece that we, that we did. It actually does that already. Uh, yeah. We were ca we ended up capturing you know the the portrait the canvas, but we also incorporated a model with it that you know she's just banging banging model that I got to, to airbrush, mm -hmm. and so you know whenever her body was just moving around, it just it, it made you look it made you feel like the whole wall was moving. You know, and and the guy on the camp, which was Bun, right? Bun was on the canvas, just like, wow, like, dang, look at that. You know, so that's kind of what I want to do is I want to do the yeah. whole uh, 
major canvas experience, but to go along with uh, with a female canvas, you know, because I really enjoy doing body art on 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 female. You right. know, I love the female body, and you know, being able to like just put art and have them feel beautiful about themselves. You know, it's just kind of it, it, it's it's a lot of fun. All right, well, that's what we're gonna do when we come back from break. You gonna have to cool your heels too. <laughs> so we're gonna take a break. And the model's about. name is Eone. Eone. You painted it looking really nice. We'll talk nice. more about that mm, when we come sir. back. See All you right. in a second, y'all. <laughs> and we're back. Yes, sir. So look, we just found out you're basically like some fucking airbrush rain man slash fucking Isaac Newton type person. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. There's, there's been several several ways to describe my Listen, airbrush, bro, airbrush. You just showed me a, a picture. Explain this picture. The lady, the lady is live. She's standing there, right? Uh huh. And you painted her body. I painted her body. But behind her is what? Is that canvas that I was working on? It's a fucking on. canvas. Yeah. Yep. And he painted her to look like yeah, a brick Because when I looked at the motherfucker. Blended I mean, in. The you lines. cannot oh, tell. Yeah. Shit, yeah. yeah you, you should have seen it on video. I mean, on video. No, they, they was, will. We'll, we'll see if we can oh, get our boss to add that to ooh, it. Wow. I mean, on video. Because it's, like, it's wow. beautiful. Yeah. Holy shit. Very creative. Very, very. So, all right. I mean, you know, if you get stoned and then. Right. Like, now, you know, now, that's my. Hold <laughs> on. We're going to stop right there because that's what I want to ask you. Estimate how much weed does it take? <laughs> I think a sober person would just enjoy the hell out of it. No, to I make mean, that for you. Oh, how much? Oh, shoot. I mean, I don't even know, you know? I mean, you sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Could be a little bit one day or it could take you, what, a zip? To do what? To, to paint on a female or to do so some just work? to be that creative. To be that creative. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh I mean, I I smoke hey. weed just because it helps me uh, just cope with. Uh, I understand. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's not really. Uh, so basically, you. I, I mean, I, I've had to do port. I have I've had to do designs like completely sober, because ah, you know I get it. You so and, and I made masterpieces. It's, yeah. it's about me just getting lost in the art. But most of the time, you 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 kind of medicated. Lately, yeah. <laughs> I no, I understand. Lately. Me too. Lately, because uh, that, that's you, you know, because uh. I mean, are are we are we already recording? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So so um, I've you that I've high. been a, I've been a single father. Oh wow! Right, since my daughter was a, a year old and okay. she just turned eighteen, um, there was a major part of her life where like I was on probation. Yeah, and you know I had to be clean. Yeah. Uh, so for the last fifteen years, I've been fucking sober. Right. <laughs> right, and I've had I've done masterpieces as well. It's not about how high I get, you yeah. know, uh, it, I definitely enjoyed the high and then, you know, it just helps me just kind of come up with even more creative things sometimes, you know, right. kind of like whenever you just drive it and you just like stone and you listen to the song, you just have this like creative It'll idea. It'll take you to another place. Huh? Right. Yeah. You, Cause you, you kind of like, you let the, mo uh, you let the moment slow down and, right. and you know, those thoughts just kind of, uh, you know, they just increase to where like you just have this aha moment, right? Wow. Sometimes, right? right? I like the way you explain it because a lot of people think when you can consume cannabis a lot, mm -hmm. it's automatically you just want to be high, right? Right. For me, it's a combination of things. It's to keep my 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 issues at bay right. without being heavily medicated with the shit that fucks up your liver and all that shit. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it also it helps me to to do this. I like researching shit. You me know what too. I mean? That's like my fucking hobby. So yeah. I get high, I'll pick a topic, and I won't let up. Yeah. So now that I'm retired, that's my fun. I understand. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, that's fascinating, right? Yeah. I mean, because, you know, like, my, my career uh, is airbrush. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm currently studying to do to fly airplanes right so oh, we're shit. going from one air product to another air 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 yeah. dynamic <laughs> right yeah. but uh yes getting yeah. high and then just being able to read this information i'm able to, to kind of like understand what i'm reading right whenever yeah. whereas where i'm like not it just a lot I, of people don't understand that 
I try to explain it like, yeah, you just like smoking weed. <laughs> Which I do. But it's not just that, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this shit has allowed me to relax my mind to where I can really absorb a lot of information. That's true. Where before I couldn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, man. I, I like the way you, I like the way you think about shit, bro. Oh, I wanna, man, for I sure, wanna for sure. go back to something. So you about to be a airplane pilot. You see it? I am one of the I am learning to fly is okay. what I want to call it, right? So right. I'm, I'm learning how to fly airplanes, but it takes, uh, you have to like uh, do your ground lessons first, mm-hmm. right? You have to master those for the tests. Like, it's like, you know, you try and get a driver's license. Right. Uh, but then uh, to ha- to obtain the private license, the private pilot license, and you do have to have 40 flying hours as well, you know? So I'm learning to fly. Just, uh, well, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go as far as as I can with it, you know. Well, I'm gonna that's, tell you, that's the goal right. would be to to be that's able why. to fly to like the Bahamas, host a big ass party, you know, where we're gonna be doing some live airbrush and live body artwork, that, and then you know just fly back home, <laughs> you know. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. yeah, that would be the ideal, you know, top goal. You know, I'll just hey, y- y'all all want to go with us? Yeah. You can't smoke though. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, you are right. You are absolutely right. Yeah, whenever Not till we land, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After after we land and everything's I'll clear, I'll smoke right? for you while we're in there. I got you. I will not let you down. <laughs> so let's you, get, you, you'll be flying too. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Let's get to some of the reason why I really wanted you to come. You from where? You from again? El Salvador. Yeah, but from in Houston, where you? Oh, Northwest Houston, Spring Branch. Yeah. So my knowledge of El Salvadorians, oh, uh, boy, y'all, did I chop it up? <laughs> go, 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 go with it. Let me, let me hear y'all what you hard. Heard. Y'all <laughs> hard, man. Yeah. Y'all got some heart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, uh, like a bull. Yeah. Mm. You know that type of heart. Mm. And then you say you from where in Houston again? North Spring, West, Spring Branch. Spring Branch. Yeah. Okay. And you've been in Spring Branch for a long time. Since you was born? Since you was uh, a kid? Spring Branch was, uh, I guess, uh, high school years. Okay. Well, my school years, right? Okay. Uh, my airbrush, my uh, career airbrush, uh, career, uh, my starting career in the, as an airbrush artist was in the Southwest Houston uh, Sharpstown Mall. Right. Gotcha, so gotcha. at that time, it was like, Nothing but Southwest. That's all. That's where we was always at. You know? And the essays was deep out there in Spring Branch. In the Spring Branch, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but what high school uh, you went to? Did you go to Spring Branch or Spring North Woods? Branch? Spring Woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would throw the W. You know, like Tupac, cause Spring Woods and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm trying to get you to speak on your life <laughs> as a youngster. Uh-huh. I see it in you. Yeah. You know, I see it in you. Okay. I know you're a street dude at yeah. some point. Okay. When did you get introduced to street the streets? Uh what age? Probably about five, six years old. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, you know. Uh I uh I remember one night just hearing somebody like, and this is where I learned about like astral projection and stuff like this i just didn't understand what was happening right but like upstairs there was some something that happened somebody got killed right Mm -hmm. but that shit didn't scare me it like intrigued me and i wanted to know more about it like uh kind of like that one movie right it's just funny because it kind of explains it uh what is it uh the good the good fellas where he says as far as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a gangster, right? That's as far as I can remember, too. Just, you know, the, the gangster life was happening outside of my, my door, you know, like uh, like Scarface said. They, they, you know, gangsters used to play with my taco toys, right? They used right. to play with our, our toys, right? you know, so it's who we looked up to. Right, right. Yeah. Man. That's wild. Yeah. I, I see. But, I then, saw. but then they would make us do stupid shit, right? Hey, like, go run this shit and, you know, do some stuff that, you know, uh, is where you started learning. Yeah. Right. So where, in that area, was that MS-13? Uh, shit, man. MS-13 started actually happening after, uh, really, really popping off after uh, I got out of all that shit. You know, I got out when I was, like, 16. The Like, all this, uh, the gang stuff. 
uh, is when I was um, decided to like focus on my new reality, which was my art, right? But at that time, uh, I had just gotten stabbed in the neck. I got stabbed from four um, major like stab wounds. Uh, well, with the pressure wounds where you die instantly, right? Mm. You got my stabbed neck, in the neck. Yeah, my neck. Uh, back here, uh, where Selena got shot. That made her, it, it cut her artery. Mm-hmm. I got stabbed there, and I got stabbed right here by the heart, right? Uh, I think the, the last one was not a fatal wound, but yeah, three three out of four, right? And and I didn't die, so. How old were you there? Different times? 16 years old. Same time. Oh, okay. All the same, same day, same moment, yeah. What happened with this? Gang, it was a gang fight. Yeah, you know, uh, I was telling you earlier, you know, uh, you know, about the whole rubber bands, blue and white, blue right. and red, and then, you know, uh, my country's colors is blue and white, you know, so I think that's part of why I always gravitated to the blue, right? That's blue all the way, you know? Right. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I just learned that, that that just the gang stuff was not for me because. So you were an active gang member? At that age, yeah. What well, you would call, uh, you know, a gang member at, at uh, in high school, right? What gang? <laughs> What gang was I in? Well, we created a gang called Lowrider uh, Mafia, right? Mm. It was, uh, it was Blue Rag, but, um, you know, it was like just a small street gang that off a of long point, right? There's mm. apartments where I got stabbed. I was telling my friend earlier that they, they made an office out of it now, right? right. <laughs> so wow. it's, it's pretty cool, but the apartments are still there. Ghetto as it used to be back then, right? The only thing that's new there is the office. <laughs> they, wanted, that, they, they wanted to hide my blood, basically, right? They didn't want, they didn't want my blood taken. What was the, what was your end point? What was the, the moment you said, fuck that, I can't, yeah. I can't fuck with it no more? With the gang stuff? Yes. Well, you know what? I mean, I used to be down like shit, like, like hey, you want to do this? Like, fuck it, let's do this, right? Hey, these people talk shit. Fuck it. Let's let's go get them, right? I was always down for fight. I was a little guy, but I was always down for fight. Maybe that's why, because I was a little guy, right? So I was like, shit. You know, standing up for my own fight. People like as tall as my friend Kodak. <laughs> and that'd be like my standard opponent, right? right <laughs> Somebody right. that height, right? Uh, always down for that shit. But that day was like 1995, 90, yeah, like 95, 96, New Year's Day, right? And... uh. So that day I was just like, well, what? Let's not fight, man. It's like New Year's. Like, let's let's have some let's have some alcohol, yeah. some illegal alcohol, cause we 16, yeah. you know, 15 years old. Uh, let's do that instead. The day that I didn't want to fight was the day that I ended up getting stabbed. All this shit happened to me. And, Damn. you know, like the people that was supposed to be down, you know, they ended up just running the scene, running away and fleeing away, you know, let let letting me die there. God, and damn. the police came and you know back then we didn't have no cell phones ain't oh. nobody was recording what was going on nobody made a phone call to Nothing. say hey somebody from the apartment made a phone call say hey you know we need the ambulance here and the cop didn't even want to call uh to get assistance for me he said uh you know well he's just another gangster off the streets you know ain't no thing four right four, four stab wounds yeah damn yeah and that was it for you, though, right? As far as being gang. involved with the gang stuff, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, before that, I was already starting to, like, See the program treatment. a new reality, okay. right? Because I wanted to be an artist. You know, I had read an article, and I was like, man, that shit looks dope. You know, I want to do something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think the next big moment in my life was when I actually started smoking weed, right? Because mm-hmm. after getting stabbed in the neck, you know, that kind of uh created this um i really really felt like i wanted to get revenge on this guy yeah you know this guy done done hurt me wow. right and you know i felt like the thing to do was to get revenge wow. but then i started like i i met mary jane and i was just like that shit don't matter fuck that <laughs> shit yeah, why <laughs> why you know i get revenge and then that she's, she's, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna draw my ass off is what I like to do. I like to get high and I like to draw and I like to sell, make money, hustle like Tupac. I I used to like just 
Well, we had CDs and we had tapes back then, so you know you didn't have a whole selection like go from blues and jazz and hip hop. You know, just whatever CD or tape you could get your hands on. That's what you listen to over and over and over again, right? So I used to jam the hell out of Tupac. Yeah, and that whole Mob and Machiavelli and Seven Day Theory. I mean, I was all entangled into it, right? The whole East Coast West Coast thing, and then. You know, I seen Houston go through it too, right? Yeah. After Houston, after the East Coast, West Coast, mm-hmm. then we started having North Side, South Side fights here in Houston, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the time when I was at Sharpstown Mall, gotcha, right? Gotcha. But and over there, it was all Southwest, Southwest. But I decided to open up a flea market spot in the North Side, and over there, all they wanted was stuff that said North Side, North mm-hmm. Side, right? So I started learning. About both, you know, different sides. I was like, well, you know, I mean, I got out of this gang shit because I didn't want to be uh, forced into like one type of crowd, right? right? Why, why just focus on one type of crowd? I mean, if I just open myself to being able to do business with anybody, I get more money, right? That's that's, right. That's so we're gonna come back in a second. We're gonna talk more about that. Talk a little bit more. I like I like that you like this different type of music, man. Yeah. I like that. That's a nice, nice vibe. <laughs> Be back in a second. And we're back. It's your boy King Kelso. And it's your boy Bone on the Fifth Ward. Circle of Life podcast. Podcast, podcast. I didn't go into the whole That's not, thing, you know. It's all good. <laughs> hey, but we was talking. We was talking it up, right? Uh-huh. And you were telling me about when hard times hit. Yeah. You had to do what? Well, you know, uh, it wasn't hard times. It was just I was a, I'm I've always been quite an ambitious person. Okay, and I wanted to do a lot more than just uh, airbrush art. I did uh, my own magazine, and I wrote poetry books. Right, uh, I mentioned Tupac earlier. You know, like a lot of my poems that I wrote at that time had a lot of influence on uh, Tupac influence. But it was my uh, my words, my my situations with some of the you know similar situations. I, I guess you, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I wrote some of my poetry. Right. right. Uh, made my own magazines because I felt uh, at the time it was hard to advertise. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't easy to just like pop up on Instagram and just start like showing your artwork. Right. So I was like, man, I, I can't afford to pay for like high end advertising, mm-hmm. but I could create my own advertising. So I made my own magazine, writing my own stories, going to car shows, you know, promoting my myself at the shows, right. my magazine, getting other stories from other people. Did it for a while, but you know, uh, the other thing that wasn't like, um as readily available back then was uh the information Mm -hmm. and like information on how to like obtain this money that the government is giving like right right? so the only way that i could figure out for myself how to make money to fund these projects Mm -hmm. that i felt important to me you know poetry and magazine was to slang so i got caught you know slang next pills uh, right before that, sh- or right at the time when you know it was become, they made it manslaughter to be slanging that stuff. Right? right? Yeah. Uh, I had a good lawyer. They got me out, but three months in jail. You know, like to judge said to show me, show me, teach me a lesson, uh, and then ten year probation. Um, God damn. Yeah. So when I was, was this? Uh, two thousand, two thousand and one. Shit. Yeah, because we was rocking it in 2000, you yeah. know? <laughs> we just made it through the millennium, yeah. right? We was celebrating. We was making magazine. You know, I had a, uh, I was starting a music studio at home, right? Well, not at home, but in, in our offices, the way that we do podcasts yeah. and everything nowadays. I was starting that back then. Uh, and I had a warehouse to, like, paint cars. And then we had a store at uh, Sharpstown. And uh, at Sharpstown, I used to sell... I started selling CDs because, mm-hmm. you know, that was my thing to start doing, the selling CDs and magazines and airbrush work, right? Yeah. Um, I started linking up with Paul Wall and Camillionaire and then Swisher House. They used to come to our shop over there at Sharpstown, 
uh, for us to sell their CDs. Back then, they didn't want to rock. Uh, well, the people said they didn't want to rock Northside shit, but uh. everybody loved their shit, man. Uh. So you know, I mean, I just I was just showing numbers, man. Right. You know, right. But yeah, so that was that episode during Sharpstown. But I got caught, you know, doing some things, and then you know, life took another turn, you know. Uh. Yeah, and then um, once I got out, I had to like clean myself, be be clean because uh, I I ain't, I ain't going back. <laughs> this is all I feel right. How about to ask you what you <laughs> learned in those three months? Shit, I mean, I mean, I could survive, but I why why go through that, right? right. No, no, this this is uh not it's uh my creativity had like reduced to probably about thirty percent. From like what it was is it is out here because you know man when my friend Kodak calls and says hey you know you want to bounce to to the mansion and do some work you know I have the liberty to do stuff like that when you when you locked up man you no no matter how much space you got you still confined to this you know laws and imprisonment man you right. know? my opinion man if if one day in confinement don't change your mind about that shit nothing will yeah I feel you. Because I'm telling you, if I felt restricted and I was in the military, yeah, I had to ask the dude when when I could leave. Yeah, I had to wait for them to tell me when when food was going to be ready. Right, right. Wait for them. To, I can only take a shower when they tell me I can take a shower. Huh. And I volunteer for this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I'm like, this ain't how it should be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm looking around. I'm like, it's 20 of us now in a room this big. I swear to God, I could get at least 30 people sleeping in there. Damn. Damn. You know what I'm saying? On yeah. the ship. Yeah. I was on a small ship. Mm -hmm. So you tell me what. And we all wore blue. Mm. Uh, denim jeans. You know, we had our rank and everything. Yeah. So everybody walk around this ship, sleeping in these things. Waking up when the people tell you to wake up. Going to sleep. When they turn them lights out, your ass go to sleep. Right. You're going to be able to eat these times of the day. Yeah. You're going to eat what the fuck they give you. So what time was y'all breakfast? Uh, six. Five okay. to six. Okay. And then if you don't, if the meal shut down, what are you going to get? Soups? Hmm. From your locker. Soup? From your locker. Damn. Wow. What it sound like? Sound like penitentiary, yeah. man. Sound yeah. like the motherfucking penitentiary. Yep. That's crazy. I say when I go man. out in the water, I'm really locked up. Uh-huh. I can't go nowhere. Yep. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So on the side, on the surface, it sounds real cool, man. That nigga Kelly in the Navy, man, he doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But considering where I'm from, legal penitentiary. Yeah, that's what uh, it felt like. Yeah, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah, because I know what the pen, man. I got my fucking uncle. That nigga died in San Quentin. Man, so I'm familiar with the penitentiary. Right. So when I got there, I'm looking around like these niggas got me. Man, they got me. Yeah. So for 10 years, I was act. Uh, Cause I was like, you bitches got me. Uh, Stuck. Yeah. I had a kid, you Man. know, and it was the only way I could make bread. So you know the hustle in me. I yeah. can't leave this hustle right now. Yeah. I got a kid to look at. Shit. So I was act for 10 years. You I mean. You got me, dog. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. I yeah. feel you. Cause I, I, you know, my daughter, she just turned 18. So I, I just started feeling oh. this freedom of like, <laughs> I don't got responsibility, but so I've been raising this little girl since she was like one year old, right? Salute to since that. She sir. was a, a one salute. year old. It was like just me and her. My my mom helped out like shh, a lot, yeah. right? But yeah. it's me and my daughter, man. Mostly me and my daughter. Um, you know, uh, so I had to I had to really uh, do the the parenting life. And then I had to keep my day job, which was a, a computer drafting, right? It was like yeah. a very strict, uh, proper, you know, yeah. tie. Well, I didn't have to wear a tie, but it was like very, ca very, business very casual business tie. casual, yeah. absolutely type wear, type, uh, you know, information yeah. and rules and stuff like that. It's shit. I was, uh, and then uh, I, was, I did it all, you know. To keep that uh, stability for my little girl, yeah. right? But at night, I, I still had to do me, right? right? So at night, I would, uh, once it was her bedtime on the weekends, I would go to the clubs, but I wouldn't go to the clubs to party. I would get hired mm -hmm. 
to do body art on the females for free, right? Oh, mm. you fine ass ladies, get your art for free, right? By mm. uh, body art by Alex, you know, Alex Airbrush Luna, you know, that's what the, you know they would always say. So, yeah, you know, I had a lot of fun, and uh, you know, just a lot of fun stories there too. You know, yeah, I mean, it sounds like for me. Let, let me let me say this right. Okay. Quick. <laughs> Being in the Navy, Army, Air Force, and all that. It has some similarities to the structure, I guess, um, of being in prison. And, you know, both of them doing time mm. and all that. Now, the opposite of that is you get paid yeah. to be in the yeah. Army, Navy, Air yeah, Force, want- Marines, and all yeah. that shit. Mm-hmm. All that, and we yeah. sleeping in this bunk and yeah. all that, you know. You're still getting paid. You say you took care yeah. of your family, yeah. your son, and all your, your kids. Yeah. You don't get a quarter. I'm with that. But even with the pay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, was I with, just don't want nobody to get missed no, or something. No, I don't no, hell no. Do this I, shit I, like, I, I support anybody. You know, go do it. That go do that. No, absolutely. You know absolutely what I mean? Not, yeah. I, know, I don't get yeah. it fucked up. I'm proud of what I did. I'm more proud of it because it was a struggle for me. I was taken out of my environment. Uh, and I didn't yeah. leave under bad conditions. Uh, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So when I was in there, I was I was in there. Right. You did. Yeah. So, but the thing is, is that the treatment of us is not fair. I shouldn't have no correlations to any story that I tell. Shouldn't remind you of anything close to prison. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It shouldn't. Absolutely, man. Now, cause now I'm tell you about the pay. Cause I'm getting ready to collect my. So uh, can y'all fuck? On the base, like if it's a female. On the base? If yeah, it's a female. The ship. If it's a. Oh, so you can't fuck with you. Well, when I was in, they didn't have girls on the on the ship. Oh, yeah. That's, okay. that's just been yeah. some recent. No, this is yeah. recent shit. Yeah. Now, ship like a small ship like I'm on, they have they have females now. Yeah, but I probably would have been knocking them down, but. But, uh, but yeah. uh, you, you can't do it? No, nah, you can go to, to jail. You can go to what? To jail. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. God, so when I was in uh, when I was in Long Beach, me and my my ex wife, we broke up for the first time. Right, so I was out there showing my ass, and I really needed to come back home. Yeah, yeah. Right, so I went to my detailer. I'm like, look, man, you got to get me out of this motherfucker. <laughs> a lot of things is happening. There's a lot of walls are closing in. I'm like, I need to go. Yeah. And just so happens, a guy that wanted to switch with me. He had he couldn't leave because his wife got fucking got caught fucking on a ship, and she was in jail. Man, right? we had already agreed to swap. I was coming to Corpus Christi, and he was going to his ass to Long Beach. But he he was they was like, "Do not answer your cell phone this weekend." Damn. Like, why not? That motherfucker wife got caught fucking one of the officers on the ship. It was a hospital ship. Oh, yeah. and uh, he trying to switch back. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going. Back to Texas. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Damn. they will lock your ass up. Dang. Yeah. Now let me get to the pay and we'll get off this shit. Yeah. So I'm looking at my social security because you know I'm trying to get that shit early. And my first two years, what my first year showed a tax of six hundred and fifteen dollars for the whole year. Man, what? I'm like, the how whole is that year. even possible? I'm like, no. No, no. Then the next year it comes up to twelve thousand. I'm like, okay, that's better. Yeah. But that motherfucker stayed from twelve thousand in between forty thousand for ten years. I was eligible for food stamps my entire <laughs> medical career. Man. So yes, I did get paid, and it's not as as bad as prison, no doubt. Yeah. But goddamn, should I even be? Having those type of stories, uh, I mean, you know, what I mean, you would it's, think, man, you do that sacrifice. I should be okay. Yeah, I at least should be eligible for food stamps. Right. Yeah, I think one of the biggest you know I mean? things that I had to battle with uh, as being, uh, you know, these last few years yeah. is uh, while working in a corporate environment and doing my own thing in the corporate environment, man, they just kept pushing all these rules and regulations and sexual yeah. harassment and i always observed that man if that female like you it's not sexual harassment yeah. but if she do not like you she don't think you're attractive then you know all of a sudden there's a problem you know for you saying 
nice dress. But the other dude is like slapping her on the ass and saying, what's up, baby? Tonight, right? (laughs) You know? But she like him. So Uh it ain't no problem. So it's like, man, that gray line that y'all got there, some bullshit ass. But, man, y'all really do have us here just like... Here, just lined up, following orders. Yeah. Even in the corporate in the corporate world, they just yeah. doing and the same I, that's shit. What, that's I felt, my whole point I felt trapped there. I felt trapped there. Yeah. So whenever I got out, yes. man, I was like, I got to unwind. I got to go have fun. You know, I got to still make money because you know I'm a single dad, so I got to come up with income for two people because right. you know it takes like two incomes at yeah. least to survive. So yeah. I'm having fun and you know doing making some more money. Yeah. You know? I, I think I think a lot of times people get those titles. Uh huh, and it makes them who they are. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm I, I know. I definitely do. I agree. But see, my introduction to the game, man, I felt like a slave right off the rip. Huh. I'm telling you, as soon as I got hit on that boat, I'm like, these niggas got me, man. And I never stopped feeling like a slave till I retired three years ago. Damn. Because I always had to ask a motherfucker, "Can I go?" Yeah. I done made a lot of money, bro. When I retired, I left a third. I I left. I walked away with only a third of my salary. Man. Thirty some thousand dollars. Hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. how much I left Fuck. for my freedom. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Because I was like, man, I am too old to still be f- fucking with this shit. My kids are grown. Let me borrow something. Yeah. Borrow something. We'll be back, though. Yeah. In a second. And we're back. It's your boy King Kelso. It's your boy Bone, man. And on the fifth wall. Circle of Life. <laughs> Circle of Life podcast. You, you ain't even high. And you, huh? Huh. No. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry, baby. We all, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. Right. Lillard, check this shit out. <laughs> so, you grew up in Spring Branch. You're a Salvadorian. And we skipped over this part. I really didn't know how much of that is still in you. The El Salvadorian Spitfire type. The Spitfire type? What yeah. do you mean? Like, What do you uh, get excited about right now? Uh, shit, just, um, my excitement is family, really, you know, uh, grand, you know, just having the family there, the artwork and just females, man. Yeah. And try, and like I told you, traveling the world. So I'd like to meet different females and airbirds, different females from different countries and put them into like just these masterpieces. And when when you're doing the airbrush, tell me how we can set this up as an event. Cause I want motherfuckers to look at this and be like, you know what? That yeah, but, that's yeah. that's exactly what we try to come right, up with so, is like how to make this into like one major event where everybody can like you know just get paid off of it, right? right? You know. So when you add brush, are they can a woman come up like uh, say, hey, ladies, come in a, a bathing suit, and we'll do uh, like, or they got to be all the way naked. Man, I mean, it all depends on the project, you know. Yeah. Well, we can have different things. Uh, we are we're you know trying out new things all the time too. Uh-huh. So, man, uh, there's some stuff that we can come out with that's just totally different, you know, just to create the whole final piece. You know, you, you know, we're just getting this like taste of, you know, what three masterpieces in the yeah. final product, right? Which is the canvas artwork and then the body artwork on the female and then the photography that puts both both of those into like a, in, an image that you could just enjoy on yeah. your wall, you know? <laughs> and so, but as, as we create more, we, we have to add more elements to it, make it more hyped up and add more okay. stuff to it. Right. You know? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we don't want to reveal too much of what's going to happen. Right, so what we're going right? to do when we get this show together, you're going to come back and we're going to explain to the people how the show works. Okay. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we'll find a place. Yeah. I think we all got one place for sure. Yeah, 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 Where yeah. You definitely. Can put on. Yeah, definitely. Um, shit. I mean, she being over there at the at mansion place is. Uh, I've been able to like really create some artwork there. So let me let me yeah, plug uh, Monarch uh, Mansion yeah, right quick. Sure. Monarch Mansion is a venue in Spring, Texas. Yeah, that is available for photographers, videographers, movie directors. It's a event, event space. If you have a small event, definitely hit me if you want to book some time at Monarch Mansion. Go check it out on Instagram, Monarch Mansion underscore venue. 
man. There's a lot yeah, of plays, man. For sure, yeah, for man. sure. Pretty big spot. You know what I was thinking about? What, what we could do? But, oh, but, uh, one more thing, though. Yeah, Because we were finishing oh, yeah. about, like, what, what was really, like, you yeah, know, my right. passion at the moment. Yeah. And so uh, I'm focusing on, on this uh, triangle of mine, right, which is airbrush, learning how to fly uh, an airplane, and writing about it, writing the whole experience of going from airbrushes to airplanes. So I got a little blog called uh, uh, Airbrushes to Airplanes on WordPress. Uh, okay. Um, to Alex Air Luna. Uh, dot wordpress dot com. Uh, we'll make sure all that information. Yeah, in for there. sure, for sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. Bro, it's you know been what? a pleasure working too, right here with all of y'all, man. You know, I was sure. thinking about Bong. What's that? Over at the Fifth Level Lodge. Yeah. Have them go over there and do something for Spook. Okay. You know what I mean? Even if we got to put up the bread or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I do think some fifth yeah. wall shit. Yeah, put yeah. some fifth wall shit on yeah. that wall. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, say, man, stop y'all, y'all, y'all just gotta make sure I'm gonna <laughs> stop smoking. <laughs> you very creative, man. Yeah, yeah. Got there. Yeah, yeah, smoke, yeah, y'all just gotta make sure I'm gonna be flying, man, well, all yeah. the time. What's your Instagram again? Yeah. Yeah. Alex Airbrush Luna. Yeah. Alex Airbrush Luna, yeah. I'm sure, thinking yeah. about you too. I got something for you. Kodak. Yeah. What What's your Instagram? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now say what he what, what's his Instagram? What's his Instagram? Kodak what? Kodak I don't know. <laughs> oh man, it's bad. Kodak dot moments. Kodak dot moments on Instagram is a very. Uh, hold hold on, I, very I believe it's Kodak dot moments right without the S. Kodak dot moment. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. We gonna have it all in the video. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. got it. Shop. You got it for sure. For One sure. stop shop, man. Yeah. One stop yeah. shop. Definitely, man. Y'all visit the, the Monarch Mansion venue and drink you some jaw juice. All right. Yeah, we're gonna talk to my man Jaw in a little bit. All right. Yep. Appreciate you for coming, man. Thank you, sir. Man, thank Salute you very much. to you. 100. Oh man. Oh, oh man. Thanks, <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> baby. You know me, I'm always flying. I know. <laughs> now we appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. You're very creative, young man. Well, what can we say? I mean, it speaks for itself. Yeah, yes, sir. We out. Yo. Tune in every Monday, 6 p.m. Tuesday, 6 p.m. Wednesday, 6 p.m. And Thursday, 6 p.m. It's like a whole series. Tune in. Yeah, check us out. All right. Young cold nigga. Yeah.